and the good folks from G1 back. Uh, slightly angled. Alright, so in the box, in the box. I don't want to box it right now. And this came up today, it's got free Wi Fi, so I'll give it a shot. Little adventures and you talk to different people, and, and I don't know if I fully get this part, but that's okay. Feel good about talking longer? I don't know about that. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Gadget Talk. I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com, and in the next uh, eight, nine, ten, maybe eleven minutes, I'm going to tell you what you need to know about the world of technology and gadgets. That's why it's called Gadget Dog. Now, if phones are your thing. You can always head over to PhoneDog.com. You can subscribe to PhoneDog TV on iTunes or Blip or wherever you get your videos, and you can get all of your mobile phone content that way. But for those of you who like to branch out a little, we bring you Gadget Dog. What is going on, everybody? This is Gadget Dog, episode number three for Tuesday, February 10th, 2009. Happy Tuesday to all of you, just a couple days away from uh, my headed over to Spain. I'll tell you what. It's like getting into a time machine because I leave for Spain from San Francisco Friday morning at just before 8 a.m. I fly for 13 hours and I get into Spain Saturday just after 8 a.m. So somehow I'm flying for 13 hours but I'm going forward 24 hours. It's crazy modern technology. Anyway, we'll be there uh, bringing you everything you need to know from Mobile World Congress 2009, all kinds of mobile phones, mobile devices. Uh, you know, Palm Pre, Android, Symbian, Windows Mobile, all that stuff. So uh, stay tuned to Gadget Dog and Phone Dog for that. But enough of that common attractions nonsense. What's going on today, right now? First off, news from CERN, C E R N, that is, that the Large Hadron Collider, which uh, if you miss say that, if you misspeak a little when you're saying Large Hadron Collider, it turns into something uh, kind of PG 13. Anyway, uh, trust me, I've been practicing. Uh, it turns out that the Hadron Collider, which some people are erroneously referring to as the Doomsday Machine, thinking that it's going to somehow create this giant black hole that's going to swallow the Earth, which is not going to happen, believe me. Uh, it got fired up last September, was on for all of nine days, doing all kinds of atom smashing, and uh, you know this thing is projected to be a very powerful tool for physicists and other scientists studying the way matter works. Uh, it was on for nine days, and then an electrical fault caused a helium leak that had to shut the whole thing down. Word coming out of CERN today that they're aiming to get the Collider back online this coming September. Uh, and it's slated to run for about a year until autumn of 2010. So those of you uh, doomsday naysayers, you have uh, another, what is that, about seven months to get your facts straight and understand that the world is not going to end when the Hadron Collider is turned on once again. And those of you who, uh, you know, are all for things like science and knowledge and progress, uh, you got seven months to, you know, study up and send your resume to CERN so you can get a job working on the, the Hadron Collider. I'm actually fortunate enough to have a friend who's a physicist who's done some work with the project, and I know how disappointed everybody was when uh, the faults happened last September after the, the machine was only online for a week. So, fingers crossed for you, CERN. Let's get the thing back up. Let's learn some more about how the world works. Speaking of how the world works, uh, Microsoft already seems to be uh, hell-bent on making a mess out of Windows 7. Uh, word came from HP that they will be offering their new Windows 7 compatible netbooks in no fewer than three configurations, and this seems to all be linked to Microsoft's uh, infamous product SKU number system of offering their operating systems in far too many configurations for uh, you know, business people, let alone the average consumer, to make sense of. And it looks like, uh, this isn't 100% confirmed, but it looks like the deal is that Microsoft is going to be putting out at least three versions of Windows 7 for netbooks. Not even getting into laptops, home computers, media center computers, game machines, whatever, all the different configurations. Three configurations for netbooks alone, which is already a sure sign of disaster. Look, Microsoft, just keep it simple. You know, if you want to have Windows 7, if you want to have Windows 7 Pro on top of that, if you have to, fine. But, I mean, how many versions do you need? You know, I understand it's all about marketing and all the OEMs you deal with and different levels with crippled features so you can have product upgrade pass whatever. Just keep it simple. Just put out Windows 7, leave it at that. If it's a good product, people will buy it. If it's a bad product, they won't. Either way, since it's Microsoft and most of the computing world runs on Microsoft anyway, you're going to sell copies. Just keep it simple. Don't confuse people. The whole point is trying to get 
you know, windows into the modern age, get more people into it with all your happy, warm, fuzzy commercials, but I'm a PC. Make it easy, all right? Uh, in other news, the first glimpse into how the Sony's PSP, PlayStation Portable, and PS Home network may interact uh, seems to have been broken on some video gaming sites today. There's a game that uh, looks to be coming out called Idle Master SP, Idle I-D-O-L, not I-D-L-E as in the devil's hands, but Idle as in American Idle. Uh, will be coming out soon, and apparently there's a feature in the PSP game that will let you, as you progress through the game and complete tasks and gain points and all that kind of stuff, let you unlock features on the PS Home Network, presumably for using, for when you play a version of the game on your home PS3. So, in other words, you play the game on your PSP, and as you advance, you're then able to somehow sync your PSP back to the PS Home Network, and then from PS3, access PS Home, and unlock new things in the game. Uh, not sure what pieces of clothing, weapons, avatars, I don't know what, new levels, whatever, on the home game. This is kind of the first concrete information we've seen, although, you know, we don't know if it's entirely true yet or not, because we haven't seen the game, but the first concrete information we've seen about how uh, PSP and PS3 may interact in the PS Home Network. I, for one, am a relatively new PSP user. Uh, I love the thing. I'm not a hardcore gamer. My all-time favorite game is Zookeeper. Anybody who knows that arcade game, you know what I'm talking about. I like the, you know, I'm a child of the 80s. I like the, uh, the Pac-Man, uh, you know, Dig Dug, that style of arcade game playing. And I love sports games. So uh, we have, a, I used to own an Atari 2600, I had a Dreamcast, you know, whatever. We have a Wii at home now, and that's fun, but the sports gaming, the arcade style gaming with the button mashing, you don't really get that as much on the Wii. So I picked up a PSP, and uh, I'm, I love it. Madden and Pro Evolution Soccer are my games right now. I'm terrible at both of them, but, I, you know, but they're fun. So I'm very curious to see how the PSP can, uh, how Sony can leverage, you know, the Wi-Fi connectivity and the whole PlayStation ecosystem to uh, you know, extend the functionality, get more out of the PSP. In the meantime, I've been playing a bunch of iPhone, uh, iPhone and iPod Touch games, and I am hooked on this game. And I'll, I'll be straight up about this. A PR person, a friend of mine who's a PR person working with THQ Wireless, sent this to me to try out as a review thing, and it worked. I got suckered. This game right here called, uh, I'll show it to you on the screen. It's going to come up. Chop Sushi. Uh, when I first heard about this game, I was just kind of like, what are you talking about? It's this, like, kind of Tetris meets, you know, board game with, like, this weird sushi theme, and it just sounded vaguely offensive at first and whatever. But uh, it's really fun. It's an adventure game, and you go through, and then you play these battles where, you know, it's a puzzle game on a board, and you have to, like, match up the different combinations of sushi pieces, and you play against an opponent computerized opponent, and depending on the different combinations you get, different things happen and whatnot. But the gameplay is easy, the graphics are kind of strange but kind of cool, and as you go through there are new recipes, so new different kinds of combinations that you can use to, uh, you know, have different things happen in the game. So you kind of unlock more and more strategy as you go. Really fun game on the iPod Touch iPhone platform. I think it's like four bucks or something like that. Worth checking out. Uh, Chop Sushi. Alright, speaking of iPhone and iPod Touch, today's mini review is of the Vuzix iWear AV920 uh, personal media system. These are virtual reality goggles, not really virtual reality, but uh, immersive goggles that you put on as such and you plug into your audio video source. They come with uh, different adapters. They came with an iPod adapter, so you can plug this in to the bottom of your iPod, iPod Touch, iPhone, or uh, you know, iPod Video, iPod Classic will work with it also. Uh, they also come with an adapter that connects to uh, a standard uh, RCA audio video out, so you can plug it into whatever, you know, your DVD player, your gaming system, whatever you want. And they project the image into these little, you know, little screens that go right in front of your eyes that are meant to uh, replicate a big screen experience right in front of your eyes. And then they also have built-in earbuds here along the uh, temple pieces that give you your audio. Um, I will tell you that I am not, I've never been a big fan of this style of device. I'd rather just watch something on the screen. But uh, I definitely have always been curious about them, was game to try them out. And honestly, my experience with them has been so-so at best. Uh, I don't find them very comfortable. I fiddled around a lot with the nose pieces 
and uh, the plastic is just kind of hard and uncomfortable. It's been hard for me to get a good fit. Now, to be fair, I have a giant head and my nose is a little bit crooked. So, you know, maybe I'm not the ideal model. But I definitely have found them to be, you know, a little bit uncomfortable to wear. Also, the earbuds, uh, they're not really that adjustable. So if they don't quite fit, you know, the length of the side of your head and into your ear, then uh, you're a little bit out of luck. You can adjust them a little bit, but not that much. I'd, I'd much prefer to see a system where you can use your own earbuds instead. Um, and I guess you can, you can kind of work around this, but you know, I'd like to see that just integrated, really easy to use. Just put your own earbuds in instead. Um, the actual image that these display is pretty good. Uh, you know, it's not absolutely amazing. Light leaks in from the top and the sides and stuff. So it's not like you're getting this whole immersive, like block out the world kind of uh, experience. Then again, I guess to get that, you can just put a sheet over your head and you know, or I can put my hood up here. And maybe that would be a little bit better. It'd be kind of tucked in. I look a little more menacing this way too, right? Um, you know, the experience isn't bad. The image is pretty good. It's not HD. Um, and it's not, you know, it, it, it does look like I'm looking into the viewfinder. It doesn't look like, I, I never, in using these, got the experience of like, oh, I'm just like lost in the content. You know, it was more like I'm looking into the viewfinder. But they work. It's a clear image. Uh, they're somewhat adjustable in terms of the image quality. And, um, you know, they worked fine with my... My iPhone, they work fine with the iPod Touch, um, you know, and different sources of video. But uh, I'm not sold. Uh, I, I found them just too uncomfortable. And I, after I, me personally, I wouldn't want to wear these like on an airplane ride uh, and watch a two hour long movie in them because they just, they hurt my, they hurt my nose and they weren't very comfortable in the ears. Uh, that being said, at Macworld, I had a chance to try out uh, a similar product from Carl Zeiss. And those were a little more comfortable. They also offered the option of using your own uh, earphones. And then they also had uh, a 3D chip that they're working on, or uh, rather a 3D functionality that they're working on, so you can get certain content in 3D. And I think that could be a more compelling kind of use of this kind of thing. Because the whole, you know, for some people they love this kind of stuff. For me, I'd rather just watch a screen. But 3D on the close-up goggle thing, that, that's pretty interesting, definitely. Um, whereas the standard video content, not my thing. But, you know, if you're watching out there and you own a pair of goggles, either the Vuzix Eyewear or a different company, definitely let us know what you think. You know, hit us up on the Phone Dog forums uh, and let us know, you know, if you're a fan of these things, why do you like them, which model do you use, and, you know, some tips and tricks for getting the best comfort and the best, uh, the best mileage out of these things. Anyway, I'll, I'll put them back on. Maybe they make a headband for me now. I don't know. All right. That being said, that does it for Gadget Talk for today. I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for tuning in. Again, you can subscribe to Gadget Dog, the video podcast now on iTunes. You can also subscribe to it on Blip. Uh, you can get it on YouTube and, of course, on the Phone Dog site. And then for you phone fans, we've got Phone Dog TV, all the latest reviews and news uh, from the mobile phone industry available again, iTunes, Blip, YouTube, and, of course, on PhoneDog.com. And don't forget, I'll be headed over to Spain this Friday. Maybe we'll do a, a Mobile World Congress preview edition before I head out. Uh, show coverage starts this coming Sunday with all the press conferences, pre-events. The show kicks off in earnest on Monday, Barcelona time, which is the middle of the night for all you here in the United States. Till then, I'm Noah. Thanks for tuning in. Maybe, maybe I'll jack back in. I'll watch some Arrested Development or something uh, while this while this. Is we'll see you next time. Bye bye.